you guys probably heard all the news. Um, various game studios within Bethesda have shut their doors. Most notably, Arcane Austin, Tangle Gameworks. Um, there are others like Alpha Dog, but I, you have to understand. I, I don't really, I don't like Xbox. I don't have any of their games. I, I don't have. I've never played any of their systems. If I did, it was probably like in GameStop when they used to have demos. But I've never been a big fan of Xbox. But I've always believed in the spirit of competition. I've always believed that there shouldn't be a monopoly on fun. There shouldn't be a monopoly on creativity. And it definitely should be a monopoly in gaming. But it appears that Microsoft and even Sony to some extent are just diving headlong into creating a really dark future for gaming. It almost feels like a Terminator 2 reference. I don't know. The reason why I make this video is I want to specifically talk about Tango Gameworks. I know there are other studios that were closed down and I feel for them, but the Tango Gameworks studio affects me in a certain way. I'm going to try to get through this without crying. I recently... Uh, played Hi-Fi Rush. I downloaded it. Literally, I was I was trying to download it through most of the uh, past couple of weeks, but I just I just didn't get around to it. It took hearing about the closure of Tango GameWorks um, for me to kind of give it a try, and I, I don't know why that happened. I wanted to experience somewhere for myself. I heard great things about it, but for some grim reason, I decided now to download it. To my PlayStation 5 and play it. It's a beautiful game. i am be honest with you. I couldn't even get 30 minutes in. And not because the game is bad. It's far from it. It's because. How beautiful that game is. How much passion. And creativity. And personality. Is just shining through that game. In the first minute. Um, I'm not going to talk about the stories of Hi-Fi Rush. I'm just talking to you about my feelings about it. That it's a damn shame that a game like Hi-Fi Rush that surpassed every metric that fought past being on, put on Game Pass and not being marketed well, Xbox not knowing what the fuck to do with it, and defying all those odds to be critically acclaimed and commercially successful game for them to shutter the studio doors. I don't really have a soft spot in my heart for Shinji Mikami. Um, he's a brilliant asshole and um, he's made incredible games, whether he's worked when he's worked for Capcom, when he's worked and moved over to Clover, um, when he established, helped establish Platinum Games and now with Tango Gameworks. But he's always found a way to kind of dip out and find new endeavors right before that studio closes. And I'm not going to talk shit. I mean, I've already talked enough shit about him. I'm mainly going to talk shit about why do I, as a consumer, continually trust in people like Phil Spencer and people like Jim Ryan, how they promote diversity and and creativity for all and we want to see games grow and all this flowery flowery language to kind of woo you guys in that hey we're gamers just like you we've been doing this we've been in this business a long time and we know exactly what gamers like you want and in one hand say those words and in another hand our businessman and many of you probably say hey that's your fault cabs you know you're the fucking fool. <laughs> you never trust a business. You never trust CEOs. They are only focused on the business. And yeah, you're right. You're right. I am boo boo the fool. But to see studios like London Studios, um, that made Sing Star and all these wonderful, great VR um, games for PlayStation, and studios like Arcane Austin, you know, despite what you guys may think about Redfall, I like the art. I like the aesthetic. It seemed like they were just put in a really shit shitty circumstance where they had to release a broken, mishandled game and they had to pay that sacrifice. 
I'm just tired of watching incredibly talented, passionate people fall by the wayside for the bad fucking decisions, the almighty greed model, and we get this homogenization. You know, we get year after year of the same games with the same stain of bad quality of just we'll, we'll, we'll ship it out now and we'll fix it fucking later or we won't fix it at all you know we'll make a sequel with the same fucking engine you know starfield it's, it's affecting me on an emotional level because i know what it's like to be drinking the kool-aid and you know attending all these meetings where you know hey we're a company you know we're going all these trips and, you know, we're, we're all wearing the same swag and we're all believing in the same vision of the company. And, you know, we're all paying attention to our quarterly reviews and all this bullshit. And in reality, no matter how hard you seem to work, no matter how many metrics you seem to surpass, you're just a number. You're, you're just a number on a balance sheet for these companies. And for some reason, Studios like Microsoft thought, let's just spin out the ass and not manage shit. Can you imagine having a job where your sole responsibility is to manage studios and you fail spectacularly on it? Where you just don't give a fuck? It, maybe it's not giving a fuck. Maybe it's just incompetence, you know? I don't know how these people got these jobs, you know? I mean, some people online say that, like, Phil Spencer, he saved Xbox, you know, 10 years ago. Um, I don't know about that. I, I don't I, I, I don't I don't keep track with Xbox. I don't you know, but like I don't understand what he's done lately to warrant him leading a division. And apparently Microsoft is taking the reins or is seemingly taking the reins away from him and looking at a lot of the studios that they accumulated with this Bethesda merger, Cinemax merger. And there may be more layoffs. There may be more um, studio closures, you know. And my heart aches for the employees, the people that work there. When I was playing Hi-Fi Rush, I couldn't, I couldn't finish it. And I, I couldn't finish it because it was so good. And, I, and it's in my mind, I don't know if I'll see another one. And I don't understand how a game like Hi-Fi Rush, like Evil Within, with so much creativity, so much talent, could just be gone in a blink of an eye. I don't understand how these decisions are made, why these decisions are made. All I know is my hope for the future of gaming is damn near towards the floor. Calm down, man. Calm down. You're a Sony pony, man. Don't worry about that. You know, you still got your your Last of Us. You still got your Uncharted. You still got all these other games, all these cinematic games. Why the fuck do you give a fuck about Xbox? Like I said in the beginning, I give a fuck because I love the spirit of competition. I love seeing creative people doing what they love to do. But it seems like we're setting unrealistic goals for these studios and we're shuttering them down because we fucked up. Because management fucked up, the executive C-suite fucked up, and their an analysis, the things that they're paid to do, they're, they're paid to forecast, they're paid to, you know, know exactly what these trends should be. You know, how can you have, how can you purchase all of these game companies and only have, like, maybe, what, five games from them that came out in the past, what, year, two years? I don't know where we're supposed to go from here. and. This needs to end and live services as a model, as much as it's shown to breed financial success, mass amount of engagement. It's also shown to be in highly destructive for companies, studios, management that don't know what the fuck they're doing. Sony purchased Bungie for billions of dollars. I don't understand what the fuck Bungie has done for them since that, since that purchase. Oh, they oversaw the live service element of The Last of Us, but we, we never got it because apparently the, the people that were working and doing that didn't know what they were doing. And is it their fault? 
Is it their fault that they were shoved into this process of making a live service game when they've traditionally done single player games? Meanwhile, Arrowhead comes out with Helldivers and that's successful. And they did it with what? 150 million maybe? What's going on? I've been playing a lot of old games lately, a lot of PS4 games, because every time I play a new game, there's some other bullshit in it. There's some bullshit that just distracts me from the game. And it seems to be, just like movies, this heavily produced bullshit. I played Spider-Man 2. There was something about that game that did not live up to the, to the promise that the original Spider-Man 1 did. And it was heavily produced. They were throwing multiple plots, multiple features at me, and none of them landed. It seems like it was I was literally playing a digital version of the movie Spider-Man 3. You know, studios, they, they're, they're throwing money and they're not thinking of, does this make sense? Should we do this? What are the long term ramifications for this? I wanted to make this video because I felt a heavy heart with a lot of the studio closures. And as someone who's experienced being laid off, it, it, it does not feel well. It does not feel right. And just playing Hi-Fi Rush, it, 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 I lament at what it could be if Microsoft pushed it further. What Arkane Austin could have been if they gave more of an effort with Redfall. It, I, I, I lament with all these studios what they could have been if they just nurtured them and developed them you know, and coached them. But studios and, and, and companies are not focused on the long term. They focus only on the short term, on what they can get right now. How many eyes, how many accounts, how many subscriptions can we get right the fuck now? Because apparently the pandemic was like the golden age of gaming. And they, now that the pandemic is kind of over, sort of over, mostly over, um, we're not seeing those same returns because people are trying to work. They're trying to make money. They're trying to live in the new world now. And gaming, as great as it is, it's a luxury. It's a fucking luxury. And you're making it more expensive, a poor quality, and you're canceling the, the most creative, innovative studios, the studios that you need to grow in the long term. Now some of the studios, you know, are being subsumed into existing Bethesda studios to, to make what? Elder Scrolls Online? Fallout, another Fallout 76? Is that a fate worse than death that I was doing, I was responsible in a studio for making a game, a property that was so far removed from those properties. And now, just for our survival, we have to be shackled into making Fallout and Elder Scrolls till the end of fucking time. Now, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to discount those studios and, and their rationale for doing that. They, they, they're dealing with the cards they're dealt with. But how horrible of a fate that is, is you can face getting your studio closed or you can get some of your people to jump shipping and come work for us and do games that maybe you don't want to do. Regardless of whether you want to do them or not. It's incredibly sad and it makes me angry. And I, I try not to get angry and sad and I try not to be negative. When is it going to be enough? How many studios got to be got to be lopped off? You know what to do. Like, share, subscribe. Leave a comment. I really appreciate it. Whether negative or positive. And be safe out there. Cabs out. Thank you.